So now what we want to do is we want to prove our formula that we saw last time using induction. So prove that the summation from j equals 0 to n r to the j equals r to the n plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1 for every integer n greater than or equal to 0 and every real number r except 1. Now r cannot be 1 if you look the right hand side of our formula here if r was allowed to be 1 we would get 0 in the denominator. So we want to prove this using mathematical induction. So remember our first step is the basis step. You look at your integer. So here n is my integer. The smallest value n could be a 0. So we're going to start with n equals 0. And we're going to plug it in to the left hand side and see what we get. So if I plug in n equals 0, this is just r to the 0, which is 1. And now let's plug it into the right hand side, r to the 0 plus 1, minus 1. So this would just be r minus 1 over r minus 1 or 1. And if you look, these two things right here, these are equal. So we've established that the formula is true for n equals to 0. So that completes our basis step. So now we're going to do the inductive step. So again, we're going to identify what's our starting point. Our starting point, we're going to assume that the formula is true for k. Assume i equals 0 to k of r to the j equals r to the k plus 1 minus 1 r minus 1. And then what conclusion are we trying to get to? We're trying to show that the formula is true for the next value, k plus 1. So k plus 1 plus 1, so plus 2. All right, so we're ready to start our proof now for the inductive step. A proof, you start with a, your starting point, or sorry, j equals 0, so it should be j's, j equals 0 to k, r, j, will be r to the k plus 1 minus 1, r minus 1, and now we look at our conclusion, and we're going to start with the left-hand side. j equals 0 to k plus 1, r to the j. So I'm going to use my properties of summations and break this up into j equals 0 to k plus r to the k plus 1. And now, for this part right here, I can use my formula up here for that. This would be r to the k plus 1 minus 1, r minus 1. And again, we, we want to get this down to having one term, so I'm going to get a common denominator. 
my common denominator would be r minus 1 so now that these have the same denominator I can combine them into one term and I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and distribute this one out so it'll be r to the k plus 2 minus r to the k plus 1 and if you look now the ones that have k plus 1's in them they have opposite signs so they cancel and if I reorder the terms in the numerator r to the k plus 2 minus 1 over r minus 1 and if you look back at our conclusion that's what I needed to get to k plus 2 minus 1 right there so this completes my proof and now what I want us to do is use that formula to help us do some computation so let's look at the following problem assume m is an integer and it's greater than or equal to 3 write each of the sums in closed form so let's start with our first one 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus 3 to the m minus 2 so the first thing I notice is that this is the sum of a geometric sequence if I take any two consecutive terms and divide them I get the same ratio I get 3 so then we're going to take our formula and use our previous formula we've identified our R so note r is 3 here and we're stopping at this power right here m minus 2 so in your formula you're going to use m, m minus 2 in place of n so using our summation formula this is the sum from j equals 0 to m minus 2, 3 to the j, use our formula, 3, n was m minus 2, plus 1, minus 1, 3 minus 1. So this is that formula, r to the n plus 1, minus 1 over r minus 1. So if I simplify this down, this would be 3 to the m minus 1 minus 1 over 2. And there is our closed formula. There's no summation symbol, there's no dot dot dot, so I know that this is the closed formula. Let's do one more of these. B. Let's add 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the 4th, plus 3 to the m. Now this is also a geometric series. This is a, uh, sorry, a sum of a geometric sequence. My r, if you compute the ratio of any two consecutive terms you'll get three but I've got a little bit 
of a problem here. If I want to use my formula, the first term needs to be 1, and it's not 1. So I'm going to have to factor out 3 squared out of every term. So that my first term then becomes a 1, which is what I need. 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared, 3 to the m minus 2. You reduce every power by 2. So I'm now getting 9 times 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus 3 to the m minus 2. So for this part right here, I can now use my summation formula, and this one is actually what we computed in part in the first part. So this was 3 to the m minus 1 minus 1 over 2.